What's up guys, welcome back to another build video. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and be sure to check out the video on how I built this rooftop tent. Now in this video, we're gonna be building a six foot by eight foot awning. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Now after watching a bunch of videos on this project, I've come up with some criteria for this build. The first being, it needs to be able to fit pretty much anybody's roof rack. A lot of the videos I watch, everybody seemed to have a pretty custom setup and it's just not super clear on how to mount that to your roof rack. So I want this to pretty much work for anybody. Secondly, I want this thing to set up really quickly and easily and I want it to look good. I don't want this to look like a rolled up tarp strapped to the side of the car. I want this thing to look good. I don't want this thing to look like a DIY project at all. So yeah, definitely not saying this is gonna be the easiest or the cheapest way to do this project but I think it will work really well and will look good. So with all that being said, let's get started on this project. All right, let's quickly go over some of the pieces I have for this project. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but I'll, I'll show you in more detail as we get to different parts. So basically for the body of the awning, the thing that's gonna hold it all together, I'm just using some aluminum angle. These are six foot pieces of aluminum. Uh, this is inch and a quarter, I believe, eighth inch thick. We're basically gonna be making a piece of C-channel with two of these pieces of angle iron. C-channel would have been a better option, but it was more expensive and harder to get, and I've got all this at Lowe's. I'm gonna make two different telescoping pole options for you guys. The, the easy, cheap version is just some Mr. Longarm uh, paint poles. These go from four feet to eight feet long. These are aluminum, they're really light. I think, that, I think I bought these for both for like $12 a piece. And then I'm gonna build another version just to give you two different options. You really could just pick one or the other. And then for the other telescoping option, we'll just be using conduit. This is a whole lot cheaper, but the, the trade-off is it's, it's a little bit more heavy. Then I just have some little brackets, some shelf brackets. This will be what attaches our body to our roof rack. And then I have a bunch of different sizes of quarter 20 hardware, we'll get to that. And for my fabric, I'm just using a piece of canvas material. Um, it's not waterproof. I don't really care for it to be waterproof. I just want, you know, shade really. But just use whatever material suits you best. All right, we're gonna start building the body of this thing. We're gonna make that piece of C-channel that uh, everything will basically bolt onto. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two pieces of aluminum angle, and then I have a piece of eighth inch thick steel flat bar. It's an inch and a quarter wide. We'll cut our flat bar into four different pieces, and then we'll mount that to the back of our pieces of aluminum to create that C-channel. So we'll end up putting a piece on either end, and then two pieces somewhere here in the middle. So yeah, let's get our flat bar cut down to size. All right, now that we have our flat bar cut, we're gonna start drilling. We're gonna slide this piece behind here. We'll get our, um, get our holes drilled. I'm actually gonna put this together with rivets um, just to kind of just to test it out. Uh, if, if I don't feel like it's strong enough, I'm just going to switch over to regular hard hardware. Um, but I'm definitely not going to rely only on rivets. Um, once we go to mount these three brackets that go to our roof rack, all this will be attached with stainless hardware. So this thing should be pretty beefy. So yeah, we're going to get our um, holes drilled and uh, get this thing put together. All right, got my piece painted up. I realized that I can't move on to the other side until I've got this permanently mounted because if I drill the holes on the other side and without this in place, these holes might not line up for rivets. So I'm about to get this riveted in place and then we'll move on to the other side. I like it, pretty low profile, especially on the inside. All right, let's get the other side drilled and move on. All 
All right, got our piece of C-channel made. I think this looks really good. It feels pretty solid, although we got two more pieces to put on the back here and here. We'll kind of divide those up like that. Honestly, this might be a little bit of overkill uh, because we're also going to mount these angle brackets to the back. This will be how we mount it to our roof rack. Um, so honestly, if you wanted to make it a little simpler on yourself, you could just mount those brackets on there just like that. Just space them out however wide your roof rack is. But we're going to go ahead and put these on and then we'll figure out the roof rack stuff later on. Done. We're good to go now. This thing feels really good. It is rock solid. All right, now that our C channel is put together and ready to go, we need to start working on the telescoping poles that will fit inside here. Now, if you want to make things really easy on yourself, go buy some of these Mr. Longarm paint poles. I got these at Lowe's for about $12. This was by far the cheapest and best option I could find for this project. I, I tried looking for things like curtain rods and shower rods and things like that, but those still ended up being over $20 a piece. And um, this just seemed to be perfect at $12. So what that would look like is you'd have one pole that would pivot at this end, and then you'd have another pole inside here that would pivot on this end. They'll fit next to each other like that. The other option that I want to show you, just in case you're not able to find this specific hole, is to use conduit. Now, to make a telescoping pole with conduit is really, really easy. All you need to do is you need one piece of three-quarter inch conduit and one half-inch piece. My pieces are both five-foot. So I just bought one 10 foot piece and one uh, of each size. All you do is drill a hole at the end of your three quarter inch piece. And then you measure how long you want your half inch piece to extend out of your three quarter inch piece. So you'll measure that distance and then you'll drill a hole in your half inch piece here. Then all you have to do is buy these little spring clips. These are really, really cheap. I'll link these down below. And after you've drilled your hole in your half inch piece of conduit, this will just slide in the end. You'll just, you'll just fold it in half and then slip it in there. I already have one installed right here. Just like that. And all this is is wrapped electrical tape to hold it centered in here so there's not a whole lot of movement in here. So we'll get this put inside real quick and I'll show you how well it works. All right, so we'll... Press that in. Just like that. It's really solid. It, it holds a lot of weight. This is a really great option. This costs probably $6 a piece to make, this whole telescoping pole. So, so yeah, I think this is a really solid option uh, for this project. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to mount this to my actual C-channel, and then I'll use the paint poles as the, uh, the vertical legs that hold all this, all this up. So, yeah, I'm going to make one more telescoping pole, and then I'll show you how we're going to mount these telescoping arms to our C-channel because it's, it's really specific. So yeah, just wanted to show you guys this uh, cheap way to do this telescoping pole. All right, we have the quarter inch hole drilled on our half inch conduit. Now we're gonna take our spring clip and get that fitted in. So basically all we're gonna do is We'll take our spring clip, we'll put it inside, and we'll just line up the button with the hole that's down the way. So we'll just try to line that up as best we can. If we miss it, we can just press it on through and uh, try again. 
So, I'm, so I'll just use this rod I have to press it on down. And you can check out, see where it is. Okay, I see this. See it now. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Now there's a lot less movement inside there. It's all centered up and everything. All right, let's move on. All right, now that we have the telescoping poles figured out, I want to mention one other thing that's really important when it comes to mounting our poles to our C channel. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to drill a hole straight through our C channel all the way from top to bottom, and then we'll drill a hole in our half inch piece of conduit. We're going to mount this thing with the half inch pivoting, not the three quarter inch. So what we'll do is we'll run a three inch bolt through all of this. And then I have a piece of steel tubing that I'll cut a section out that will go right here. We'll run the bolt through here and then I'll act like a spacer so that when we tighten that bolt down, we're not, we're not squeezing the C-channel. We're not putting stress on that at all. So once we have all that put together, what's gonna happen is this, this will pivot right here just like that, and then while you're setting everything else up, what's gonna need to happen is you're gonna need to set this pole on the ground. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna, it's, the pole is gonna end up wanting to do that, and that's gonna put a ton of stress on our C-channel and on the pole itself, so some of them will eventually break, um, either aluminum or the um, conduit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a small section of our conduit out, probably like a two and a half to three inch piece. We'll drill a hole in that and that will be fixed to the bolt going through here. And then we'll attach the rest of the pole with a, um, a really stout piece of hose. So they'll ha we'll have a hose between the two pieces so that our short section can stay straight and then this piece will be able to pivot right here without breaking or putting too much stress right here. This all makes sense in a little bit, but I just want to show you that. So what we're going to do now is cut a little section of our half inch conduit out and then we'll get holes drilled and we'll get um, the whole pivoting system figured out and then we'll attach the rest of our telescoping pole. So yeah. All right, this is what it should look like. There's very little play in that. So once we have this nut on here and tighten that up, that should be really solid. And it's not gonna crush our C-channel here. So we'll do this on the same thing on the other side. Now, I'm gonna show you the hose that's gonna attach those two pieces together. This is called heater hose. Found this at Lowe's. Has an inside diameter of 5 8 outside of 7 8 which is perfect because the outside diameter of this half inch conduit is a little over 5 8 so uh, it's going to be nice and snug. So what we'll do is we'll cut a section off of the hose. We'll use some hose clamps on each side to put all this together. All right, so I was gonna use uh, some pipe clamps on this, but since the connection between this hose and the pipe is so tight, I really don't think I'll need that. I just either need like a set screw or a rivet. So I think since I have this, I'm gonna try a rivet on either side and see how that looks. I think that'll look a little cleaner.
Yeah, that looks way better than these hose clamps. All right, our C-channel that mounts to our car is ready to go. It looks good. Um, now I need to start working on the part that's opposite of it. So we got these two poles that are in here uh, will deploy horizontally and then opposite of it we'll have two poles that deploy vertically that hold everything up. So I originally thought I was going to need to do another piece of C-channel on both ends um, to hold the poles just like on this side. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a single piece of aluminum angle. I think this will be just fine. So what I have in mind is instead of a bolt going all the way through both sides of the aluminum, I think I'm just going to do a, a post that will mount something like that that the poles will pivot on. I think that's going to work. And then uh, one other modification I need to do is are, these paint poles are eight feet long and I need them to be six feet long. So what we'll do is we'll take a foot off of the ends here and here, and then we'll put these little plastic caps back on because I want to use them. Uh, so yeah, we're going to shorten these poles down and then we'll get it mounted up to our piece of aluminum. Just so y'all know, this end that I'm attaching is the side of the pole that had the threads on it. I just cut those threads off and left the insert in there just to strengthen up that piece of aluminum once we go to mount this. If you're using a real thin aluminum like this and you don't have some kind of insert, just put like a piece of a wooden dowel or something in there, a tight fitting dowel, uh, so that strengthens up that section of aluminum that we're going to be kind of pinching in this right here. So just wanted to mention that real quick. Just like that. That feels pretty solid. So what I'm thinking, uh, at the end of our telescoping poles, I'm gonna have a little post coming out just like that. I think I will get a piece of wooden dowel to fit in here and then this post just like that. And then right here we'll drill a hole right there so our piece will come in and fit just like that. And that post will go right through here and through the back just right there. So yeah, I'm going to work on getting this post to be able to stick out just like that. Cool. All right, we got that sanded down to the perfect size. And that'll fit just like that. It's absolutely perfect. And then we'll put a small screw right here in the side to hold that dowel in. But that's gonna be perfect. All right, now that we're done with this guy, we're gonna take it out to the car, figure out where we wanna mount it, and then we'll measure uh, the bars of a roof rack to figure out where we're going to need to mount our little brackets. That looks just about perfect for me. Now I'm just going to measure my crossbars and figure out where we want our brackets to go. To mount this to my crossbar, I'm just going to bolt these together right through here. Now, if I was to mount this onto a standard roof rack with crossbars, I would just get a longer version of this piece right here and then use U-bolts to clamp it across there. I think that would work just fine. All right, we got our brackets attached. Now it's time to start working on our fabric. It's looking good. All right, use whatever fabric you have available. I'm using some duck canvas that I got at Joann's. 
I got a little over 12 feet, um, two six and a half foot pieces that I'm gonna sew down the middle to get my eight foot, it'll end up being about 10 feet, but to, I'll shorten it to eight feet long, six feet wide. Uh, so yeah, I'm about to sew this up. I'm gonna sew it right down the middle and uh, then, we'll, then we'll hem the edges. done didn't go in a whole lot of detail because I know everybody's fabric situation is gonna be a little bit different but basically what I did was I took two pieces of duck canvas fabric sewed them together in the middle to give me one piece that it ended up being six feet by eight feet I did a hem all the way around all four sides on the side where it attaches to our body pieces I did an extra large hem right here so that this piece of aluminum could fit inside just like that but I'm going to attach it to our main piece of C-channel just directly on top of it just like that and then I'm going to use some rivets to attach it here the reason I'm doing that is because if I didn't use a piece of aluminum and I just added some screws then it's going to be pulling pretty tightly at those different screw points so so to take the load off the fabric i'm just using that aluminum piece and i'm going to rivet it in there if i wasn't going to rivet it i would use what's called a lath screw small three quarter of an inch about flat head um, i would use these and then use a grinder on the other side to take that point off on the underside these would work totally fine i really enjoyed using this little rivet gun this thing is Really cool. Uh, I've never used rivets before on any of my other projects, so this has been uh, neat. Gives it a really finished, clean look. So I really like this thing. So yeah, I'm gonna get this attached to our main piece of C-channel, and then um, we'll open this thing up to get it attached to the other side. All right, the rivets are in. I think that looks really good. I might add a couple more, but I think that looks really nice. Now I'm gonna stretch it out across the floor so I can get it attached to the other side. size kind of pulled out a little bit more tall. I'm gonna start drilling this up and get rivets in it over here. All right, now that our awning is pretty much done, I'm gonna go ahead and make a cover for this thing and then we'll get it on the car and I'll show you how it opens up. Um, so I'm gonna use a little marine grade uh, vinyl that I had left over for my rooftop tent cover that I've built. Um, just got that at Joanne's Fabric. And I have a little bit of webbing, just webbing strap, one inch webbing strap, and then these parachute buckles um, that we're gonna use to secure this thing. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting a piece of vinyl that's a little bit longer than the awning, probably five inches on either side, and then a little bit more round. So I, I measured about 12 inches around the awning, so I'll probably end up cutting a piece that's like 14 or 15 inches round. 
And then what we'll do, we're, we're basically just gonna make a sleeve for this thing. So we'll sew one little stitch on either end. I might add a zipper, I'm not really sure at this point. But what we will do is use the webbing straps. Probably, I'll probably do like three or four straps down the length of this thing to, to wrap it up and hold it all together. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get my vinyl cut and we'll get it put on this thing. All right, now that we have our vinyl cut, we're gonna fold it in half, just like this, inside out. And then we're gonna run a stitch along this edge. Probably, I'll probably end up doing two stitches across here. We'll do the same thing on the other end as well. Bam. Just like that. Now that this is stitched up, we're gonna flip this whole thing back the way it's supposed to be. Just like that. So now this is the end of our awning. will look like this. All right. Put this around our awning just like that. And this is kind of what the end will look like. If you're, if you're not going to put a zipper on here, I would make sure you have extra fabric kind of down to here. That way you can kind of roll it all around and then strap it. Use your vinyl, your, uh, your webbing straps to strap all that together. Uh, kind of like a dry bag does, kind of rolls onto itself. Um, but yeah, I think this is going to look really nice. I'm going to add a zipper in here real quick. All right, so if you want to use a zipper on your build, um, you want to put, you want to install the zipper before we sew up the end like that. It'll just be a lot easier. So what we're going to end up doing, I have a, this sleeping bag zipper from Joann's. Um, I think it's about eight feet long, but you can end, you can cut these at any point. So what we'll do is we'll unzip it, and then with the teeth fa facing outwards. We're going to sew this along this edge just like this and uh, we'll overlap about a half of an inch just like that. Now the one thing that really helps with sewing in zippers is this wonder tape. This is basically double sided tape for fabric. Um, what, we'll, what we'll do is we'll run that tape along this edge. We'll peel the other side off. Then we'll stick our half of our zipper on that one side and we'll sew down. This basically just holds it in place. makes it a whole lot easier when, when you put it in the machine. Uh, it's easier to see what you're doing. Uh, and then once we have this done, we'll do the same thing to this side and then we'll get our ends folded over and, and sewed up. All right, here's a zipper stop. I'm gonna bring that, kind of overlap it so that the teeth runs the full length. But the, I mean, just make sure your teeth are facing outward here. So we'll overlay that just like that. And then we'll line up this edge with the edge of our tape. Once you've gone a little ways, you want to fold your material back and make sure that you're good right here. All right, that's how she looks. Looks good. Let's do it to the other side. All right, now that our zipper is, is sewn on, we're getting ready to just sew up our ends. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the excess zipper. So we'll just line it up, cut it off with the, some scissors. It's not very hard to get the, sew, the zipper back on there. And then um, we'll put the zipper back on and then we'll sew up our end. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a little extra rain to work with here. But I did cut it off. I'm gonna touch the zipper. All right. Lined up just right. All right, now we're just going to sew up our end right here and then we'll flip it inside out. All right, we've got it sewed up on each end. We're going to try to flip this thing inside out. find the holes for our brackets, get those mounted, and then we'll test this thing out. I'm really happy with the way this looks. All right, this thing is done. Time to put it on the car, see how it does. I added the little key slot in my bracket so this mounts up pretty quickly now. Put that on both sides. One thing I did off camera that's really important is I added these straps in here. I did three straps across here, and these are really important to hold this all together inside your cover. All right, now that we have the awning mounted to the roof rack, let's see how long it takes to set this thing up. Configure it in a couple different ways if you want one side to droop down to a hold just fine. You need to drop it real quick, you can drop it all the way down. You want to Awesome. Really like how quickly this thing sets up. So easy. Really happy with the way this thing turned out. This is awesome. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Feel free to hit me up in the comment section below if you have any questions. Or if you have a project you'd like me to tackle next, I'd like to hear about it. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next video.